Ready. Ready. I think I can smell fish. Hi, welcome to Family Bicycle where we have wild adventures with kids and bikes. My name's Tom and today we're going to look at 10 things you should consider when taking your bike on a ferry. Well, the coronavirus lockdown is starting to be wound back and people are starting to think about making plans for going abroad, going to the continent, going and having a holiday. We've heard in the last week that Brittany ferries are allowing people with cars to start using their ferry to the continent once more, but that they're not letting people take their bikes on. It's a ridiculous decision. It makes no sense whatsoever. It's another bit of discrimination against cyclists. But it's a crossing that we've used and we really enjoyed it as well. We went to Brittany in 2015. Of course, we live on an island here in Britain using ferries is something we're going to have to do to take our bikes to the continent to go to other islands we love riding in the outer hebrides and places like that we've already traveled on quite a few of them so here are our 10 tips 10 things to consider if you're thinking about taking your bike on a ferry apart from if you want to go on a Brittany one that they won't let you on yet Now if your journey is a long one, if you're going to another country, if you're going overnight, if it's a ferry crossing that is really pivotal to your journey, then it's always worth booking in advance. Make sure that you get the berth you need because ferries, particularly in the school holidays, will fill up and just because there's space for your bike doesn't necessarily mean that you'll actually get on as a passenger. Get it booked, work out what the criteria are and we would usually say ring the ferry company because booking online with bikes half the time just doesn't work. When we booked to go to Brittany in 2015, I tried to put in that we had three children, two adults, we were traveling by bike, and the booking engine came back and said, nope, you can't do that because children under four can't travel by bike. And you can't argue with a website, can you? So ring the ferry company, talk them through what you're doing, Unlike with airlines and trains where you might want to try and bend the rules a little bit in order to get your outfit on, rolling your bike onto a ferry is never a big deal. So make sure that you get the booking that you need and nail it down. Book all of the extras if you need to. Get yourself a cabin. Make sure that all of the things that you need to know are nailed down for that journey are done. really important that you plan for possible delays especially if your ferry journey is towards the end of a day and you've got to get somewhere beyond that if you get stuck on a ferry possibly with no mobile signal and you're not able to replan the next bit of your day and the time's slipping away then you could find yourself in trouble so if we're catching a ferry towards the end of a day we're now really really careful about expectations about mileage for the remainder of the day especially with the children because we did get caught out once and I did have to threaten to pitch the tent in the middle of the port in pool because we turned up hours later at the port than we should have done ferry line had known about it all day and hadn't told us we'd crossed from San Marlo to Guernsey Guernsey to pool and we arrived in pool there was no way on God's earth we were going to make it to the campsite that we'd planned to and we ended up shelling out a whole load for a hotel that Condor ferries said they would pay for because of the late running they never did we ended up with a big bill and a whole load of stress so think about the other things that are going on in your day ferry crossings can go wrong ferries can be delayed whether before the crossing, during the crossing, at disembarkation, just don't leave yourself in a tight spot is what we're saying because the crossing might not go as planned. We try now not to put ourselves under too much pressure to do other things on the day of a, a big crossing. A bit of extreme bicycle touring here. We're in the queue for the ferry. There's a berth. And uh, it's a tsunami. 
It's a Poon army. Poomageddon. Thanks for that one, Ruth. Thanks, Apundle. If you travel by ferry, you're going to have to spend a lot of time waiting around. And particularly, you get the worst of both worlds with some carriers if you're travelling with a bike, because they'll make you wait with the cars, but with none of the facilities for the foot passengers. So when we crossed to France, we ended up stood out in the rain with the children for a, a good couple of hours at one stage. We'd made ourselves available in good time. We'd breezed through check-in. And then while the foot passengers had a lounge to wait in, the motorists all sat in their cars, and we sat at the front of the queue with a glorified bus shelter for the cyclists to share while we waited for the vessel to become ready. What then happens though is that you've got to move really, really fast. All of a sudden, right, we want you on the boat now. We've taken no interest for all this time. Get yourselves down there. You'll wheel your bike into the boat. Come on, come on, we want to get the cars on behind you. Someone will want to take your bike off. You'll want to lash it to something. So be ready for the next thing. Always be anticipating what's going to happen next. You're going to have to sit and kick your heels. There's no doubt about that at some point in the process. But be ready for what that next thing is likely to be. Ask the staff what the score's going to be before you start so that you know what to expect. Because you could end up hanging around for a long period and then being expected to suddenly park with your bike in a hurry. And we found that really quite stressful. I'm sorry, I've got two little children. I can't help you. Be prepared for the fact that you might have to spend time waiting outside. You might not be undercover. You might have time to kill. Have a think about what you can do about that. If you're in a waiting room or something like that, find some power, get some things charged, see what you can do to make good use of the time. But always just have that thought in your mind, what's the next stage going to be? Because it might happen really, really suddenly. Right. There we go. All sorted. Right number of children. The bikes are in. We're very grateful for your care. It's, uh, it's, it's one of the bits of the trip that we uh, that, that, that we, concern, yeah, we get most concerned about and we yeah, get yeah. in and out safely and all of that. So. Right, thanks, Jim. We'll see you at Paul. Thank you Cheers. Number four is a real quick one, and that's just keep your paperwork handy. While all of this other stuff's going on, whether you shove your passport up the leg of your shorts or whatever you do, keep your boarding papers, keep your passport if you need it handy, because somebody's going to ask for it. It's guaranteed at the most inconvenient time. Number five you learn really, really quickly that nobody cares about your bike quite as much as you do. I find myself wishing that I paid a bit more attention at Cubs because the range of knots required to secure a bike onto a boat with simply a piece of rope beyond me. I hate handing my bike over to somebody else to have it lashed into the hold of a ship and as far as possible I always try and at least stay there and supervise. I think people are going to be kinder to your bike if you're stood on their shoulder watching them at the time. Uh, not sponsored but I carry these valet straps uh, we've got a few of those of different sizes that we take with us, occasionally just a rubber bungee. Uh, you might also want to think about maybe some bar wrap on your top tube or a bit of pipe lagging or something like that. There's a chance that your bike is going to be lashed up to the side of the car deck with other bikes on top of it. Other people might be moving it. So give them the best opportunity to either not have to do that or to at least not damage your bike when they do. A lesson in Calmac ferry boarding. We're getting quite adept at it now, but uh, we've needed to bring our own uh, our own bungees here to be sure that we're on the boat. So uh, always well to have a couple of spare ones, uh, especially if you've got an outsize outfit like ours, because we couldn't have got our bikes into the space that uh, they originally envisaged. So number six, the big burly fella has taken your bike off you and is tying it up to the side of the car deck and you're now being ushered to get the heck off the beach because they're probably about to send the cars into the car deck behind you and they want rid of you. At this point you're going to be parted from your bike really rapidly and you need to have thought through what am I taking on the ship with me, what's going to stay with my bike, what do I need. Not sponsored again, but we love our Ortlieb handlebar bags because we can take them straight off the front. We've got an insert for our SLRs to go in there. My documents are still shoved up my trouser leg. And then we also use a rucksack adapter for one of our panniers. So the pannier comes off, clips onto the rucksack adapter. We might have already done this while we were in the queue, actually. Get that on your back. And we use various cloth baby carriers for taking children out of trailers so that we're carrying them as well. So it's really important to think about what you're going to need while you're on the boat because you're not going to be allowed back to the car deck and they're going to want to get rid of you really, really quickly. Now, number
number seven is a bit of a personal one because it depends on how much you enjoy ferry crossings and indeed how much anyone you're traveling with enjoys ferry crossings. We've had some issues with the children, it's fair to say. If we get the choice, we will always take an overnight crossing, have a berth, get the children on, get them to sleep as quickly as possible if we can before the ferry sets off. Uh, and do as much of the crossing as we can with the children asleep, with our cabin, with a controlled environment where we're sort of self-contained, isolated from everyone else on the ship, and we can do what we need to do. We generally find that overnight crossings are less stressful. It's a night's accommodation. You arrive in a new place in the morning, ready to go. If there's an overnight option and it comes back to booking ahead, make sure you get a decent cabin, make that part of your trip. There's nothing worse than being in a confined space on a ship that's pitching around and the children are either climbing the walls or puking on them. Now speaking of people puking on the walls, number eight, take care in the canteen. It often seems like a really good idea to have something to eat, and indeed very often it is. But we went to the Hebrides, we crossed from Oban to Tyree, it was an evening crossing, we had something to eat in the canteen, saved us cooking, it was great, the children had something to do. Next morning we got the same boat again, we went across to Col, had a cooked breakfast on the boat, thought yeah this is definitely the way to do it. The next morning we got on the same vessel again to do the crossing from Col to the island of Barra. It started to get a bit choppy and it didn't go very well. It all started to go a bit wrong today when they insisted that uh, it was last call for lunch, just as things started to get a bit choppy and the vessel started to pitch. So having bought our lunch and just sat down at the table with it, we suddenly found ourselves faced with three crying children practically, of whom two were feeling sick. Katie took Thomas down uh, to get some fresh air and uh, meantime, Ruth was uh, sick all over the tombly booze in the uh, in the restaurant. Fortunately, the iPad uh, has, has wiped clean, but uh, we caused a, a reasonable degree of carnage. It's fair to say, and we're very grateful to Caledonian McBrain's uh, staff, uh, who, in inverse proportion to their seniority, have been incredibly helpful. And Ruth's now uh, had quite quite a good sleep, having emptied her stomach. So, uh, hopefully, things will, will pick up from here. Number nine, you've arrived in your destination port or you're getting there, the public address system has crackled into life, well everybody returned to the car deck and you think, it didn't go so well on the way in, I was rushed, I want to get down there, I want to make sure that my bike isn't taken away by somebody else or not looked after, I want to have time to get my bags back on and all of that. Don't be rushed. Never let them rush you back down to the car deck because apart from anything else, the motorists are all going to rush back down there. Half of them are going to ignore the rules about not switching their engines on and before you know it, you're going to find yourself choking on their fumes, not being allowed to get off. So very often you'll find that you get put onto a ferry first as a cyclist, but you won't necessarily get off first and you don't want to spend a load of time on the car deck being choked by other people's fumes. <music> That brings us to number 10, which is that we just don't advise trying to get a flyer off the boat. Let the traffic go. You know, whether it's a big ferry disgorging into a large port where even the roadways around the port are not going to be particularly fun, or whether it's a smaller ferry where you might be out on a remote island and you might only have, you know, 10 or 12 cars on the boat with you, they're all probably going to be going up the same bit of road to start with. Don't set yourself up for a whole load of overtakes that you don't need to put up with by being off the boat first and then having everybody overtake you on the road. Let the traffic go, take your time and then set off at leisure. So there's our 10 tips and a bonus one once you've got off the ferry, find an opportunity if you can to give your bike a clean, give it a wash down, get the effects of the salt water off it, get some lube back on your chain. We've been really, really surprised in the past how even on a closed car deck, after a crossing we've found the effects of the salt water on our bikes very, very rapidly afterwards. Now I'm sure you'll have your own tips and hacks about taking children and bikes on ferries. We'd love to hear them. Stick them in the comments down below and perhaps we can share some of those. Thank you very, very much for watching. Give us a like if you've enjoyed the video. Subscribe to Family Bicycle, hit the bell and then you can hear about our next video when it comes out. If you haven't seen it already, Ruth, our seven-year-old, did a 77-mile ride to the seaside at King's Lynn a couple of weeks ago. We'd love to show you that one. There'll be a link at the end. And most of all, thank you very much for joining us. We look forward to seeing you again on Family Bicycle. 
See you in the next video. Take care. Family by Psycho. <laughs> Mummy, that's a big ship. Oh, wow. That is a very big ship. Is it water? Water, yeah. Water goes splash. Splash.